right, guys, uh, welcome, Aeolus Defense. This is the third installment of our series on LVPO zeros. And we are now going to do a 50 yard zero. We've done the 36, we've done a 25. Go back and look at those. Uh, very informative information that we put out in there. So today we're going to do zero the gun at 50. We're using a Daniel Defense 16 inch barrel, PPU 62 grain, SS109 NATO spec ammo, shooting 2,900 feet per second. Uh, we're holding about one MOA group throughout all of this, all the testing that we've done. And uh, you know, if you guys are really wanting to nerd out, we're about what, 3,000 feet elevation right now, 85 degrees, it's hot, it's sweaty. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and shoot zero at 50 and then go out, hold here, do 100, 200, 300, 400, and see, same point of aim, and see if we can keep them all on this target to see how this works out. Yeah, guys, and we may not be able to, right? We may not be able to have all of them hit to 400. That's the goal of this. So many times we see people on YouTube that aren't wrong all of the time, right? We see guy, we see ballistic calculators. There's just so, so many variables that come into play whenever you're zeroing your rifle. That's why it's so important. Everybody I see on YouTube still tells you, you need to go do it. Yeah. You cannot say this is what you should zero at. And this is, this is gospel. You have to say what works the best for my rifle, my load, my ammo, my elevation, my, cause it's going to change. Part of it is your skill set and what targets you're trying to engage and what your conditions are all the time. I mean, right now, I mean, it, it's pretty windy out here, right? Yeah. Now. And so we saw that in the other tests where wind can really affect because we're zeroing in a closer range where wind doesn't necessarily have that effect. But, you know, something to think about and, and either practice and also how much are you able to get out and practice? You know, ammo availability is difficult. Uh, maybe you don't want to burn this. This is does not take a lot of ammunition. So this is not something you need to go out and burn 500 rounds of ammo and waste a bunch of money doing to understand what your rifle is going to do with these ranges. Yeah, we, sh we shoot maybe 30 rounds per set to be able to hit these targets. Uh, right? and, that's, and that's including zero and, you know, so we're, we're only doing a couple ranges. We're shooting three round groups. There's no reason for this to get out through to a five and 10 round group. Nah. That, 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 is, that is for a different, this, that is for a different field, a different uh, evolution in what you're understanding your rifle can do, you know, zero shifts and things like how your barrel heats up. That's not what this is for. This is to tell you if I aim here, am I on a target of whatever size I need to be? Yeah, so combat zero, right? All right, so like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, go back and watch those other couple of videos and stay tuned. All right guys, so we just got done zeroing our rifle at 50 and we immediately went out to 100 yards to shoot a group and see, you know, while holding dead center, what it looks like. You'll see it right here, it was 100 yards, uh, you know, about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half inch uh, group. So that's about uh, what we're seeing for this ammo. And now we're gonna back up to 200. Nothing surprising about this, right where we thought it would be. So stay tuned, 200 yards coming up. Alrighty, so we got some bullet holes right here, right here, and uh, a random bullet hole it looks like right there. So we're gonna hit it with a little bit of paint real quick. This was our 100. This was our 200. Uh, and we just wanna, we wanna repaint this because it's, it's obviously flaking off a little bit. So just bear with me here. All right, guys, so that was the 300 yard test with this Daniel Defense shooting 62 grain PPU SS 109s, 2900 feet per second with a 50 yard zero and at 300 yards again, holding dead center here. And uh, this is where we're at at 300. So interesting results. Any bets where 400 is going to be? All right, guys, so uh, another bad news bear situation for Mr. Trey. Yeah, I don't know. Um, there, are, there are no bullet holes on, on Bob here. So, yeah, wait for recap. So, 50 yard zero, this is very popular. Most people that I see are in the camp of 36 or 50. 
Um, this is a big one. John Lovell is here, um, and he's a great shooter. Um, 50 LPVO, 16 inch barrel. Um, here's what I'm feeling right now, guys. It's 85, 90 degrees. The wind is starting to blow a constant 10 and gusts to 12. Oh yeah. And as I get out there, one, the Mirage is baking in that scope because it's the Vortex one to 10 and I can't, I can't, there's no parallax on it. So it gets blurry, it gets unblurry. It's kind of weird. And as he says that though, there's not an LVPO that I know of that has a parallax adjustment. No, I don't, I don't think I don't so. Even Maybe know the Cullis. Uh, I don't even know what the Cullis does. No. Yeah. So I'll, we'll have to look and get back to you on that one. But anyway, it doesn't have it. And, and the dot, when you start getting to two, three, and four, that a lot of it is you're trying to just hold and try to get your lines flat because you can't see it. Like the dot is taking up too much or the extra horseshoe dot the is The horseshoe around this reticle is, the dot itself is, is plenty small enough to hold, but the horseshoe, when you start having to hold in this condition, where we're having to hold about here, that horseshoe is covering too much of the, the yeah. reticle. Have you guys ever seen a horseshoe reticle? Now, do I not like that? No, I, I still like that. I, there's not a thing about this Vortex right now that I don't like, no, it's still, except yeah. for the stupid little ring coming off. Yeah. But so far, the Vortex on 1 hair. to 10, I like. Yes. But yes, it does when you start getting out there, especially the 3 and 4. Now, uh, there's some windage here, but might kind of go over an overview of the 50 yard where I was hitting. Okay, so obviously we didn't shoot 50 on the, on the target here because that was where zero was. So we did 100. No surprises there. About what the gun was going to group. Looks good. A little high. No big deal. That's what we were expecting to see. And you know, if you guys have been out hunting and, and whole nine yards, you're oh, a little high at 100, you'll be okay at 200. Again, exactly what we expected to see. Here's his 200 yard shots in here. He, he did have one over here when we're trying to hold for that wind to figure that out. But again, on the target, a, a little bit more vertical than we would like to see, but that could have been Mirage kicking up and everything else. But again, good overall grouping right where we thought. Then we got to 300, you could see his first. Again, I'm trying to figure out that wind. All right, there, here we are. Boom, boom. Still on the target, but again, low, you know, um, eight to 10 inches, call it 10, unless you want to count for that one, and then we're well past 15. So no surprises that there aren't any 400 yard holes on this one, right? Very linear progression, as we've always learned when we look at a 50 yard uh, you know, zeros we start getting out here for. So this is where 400 was out, somewhere down in here. Uh, so well low off the target, uh, not surprising. But yeah, still would be effective, but it's off the target. It, this would be something that um, right now, I like the 50 yard, if 200 is your goal. Um, maybe a possibility of 300 but especially if 200 your goal inside Absolutely. of that it's going to be great i mean it's, it's what we were always taught when we were hunting as kids or you know even as adults you know side in 50 100 yards depending on what you have you know if you're shooting out here any place you don't have a laser range finder you can really get out there and then dial or really have a good holder but you're shooting a regular duplex reticle you know okay 300 well this is how far off you were to get that so in this case, we always said hold hide on an elk or something like that at 300. If you think he's 300, hold top of his back. Okay, he's gonna be good. So, uh, you know, not a bad zero. I think it depends on the target size you're talking about. One of the things with this 50 yard zero is in a previous zero, we found that the further they got away, the lower we needed to aim. In this zero, this one goes back to the further they get away, the more we need to lift it up and do some Kentucky windage, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So in order for you to be a professional gunman here, you need to find out what this is for your gun mm -hmm. and figure out where it is on the target and have that written down. But if you are a, you know, just depends on your area of operation, what you do, how it fits you as a shooter, doesn't matter what works from, doesn't matter where, Mike, me, doesn't matter. What matters for you, your gun, your ammo. 200, if, if you're 200 yards and in, a 50 yard zero is pretty freaking good. Yeah, I mean, that's point A, point of impact, really, uh, considering the accuracy of what we were doing. I think we should, we were looking at, you know, five, six inches. That's really good. That is, that is smaller target engagements without having to worry about that. And I think that's the difference that when you look between them, what does a 25 or that 36, and that's why it's real important to watch those other videos because you'll see the dispersion in what we're shooting to ma help make you make those decisions based on, again, what you're trying to shoot at those ranges. That's right, what is effective for you being a professional shooter? All right, guys, here we go. Um, we need your help. We need you to share this with everybody. We need you to like, we need you to subscribe, we need you to hit the bell notification. We need you to go to Patreon for some behind the scenes stuff. 
There's some stuff there that we say that we don't say everywhere else. There's some more fun stuff that we do. It's not videos like this, so please check us out on Patreon. But thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, bell notification. Stick with us for the 100.